Welcome to fall. And I thought a great way to get started would be to make an apple pie with you guys today. And I have a few of my favorite things here for my pie. I have my Granny Smith apples. And I don't know if you guys have tried it, but Eggland's best eggs are incredible because they also stay fresher longer compared to ordinary eggs. And I'll tell you, that's a great thing for me because I always forget to check how long I've had eggs in the refrigerator. And so these lasting longer is awesome. They also have less saturated fat compared to ordinary regular eggs. So uh, two bonuses on that. Um, so let's get started. I start out with all-purpose flour and um, I do four cups of all-purpose flour. So I'm kind of a loose baker. I don't really um, uh, go for exact measurements. I do uh, about two tablespoons of sugar. And then I add um, a pinch of salt, whatever that means to you, right? Then I, um, I just kind of mix that up a little bit. You can do it differently. I've done recipes where I, I do pie a lot that has just butter, but it's still a lot of butter. But um, this is vegetable shortening, so it's probably not the worst thing in the world, but um, this is the grandma trick. It makes the flakiest, best crust. And everybody that has had my pie loves this pie. I, in fact, I sold 3,000 pies in seven minutes on QVC. So, see like this? And I kind of cover it a little bit with uh, flour. And then you take two knives and uh, you just do this slicing motion in there. I guess they call this cutting in. And you just keep doing that until you get it all into um, little, uh, almost like little peas or that kind of thing. I thought I'd also show you this other tool, which is great. It's kind of easier than the knives thing, but it has, um, it has blades. Uh, I don't wanna cut my finger, but it has like little blades. Um, and you can just go over it and get the same effect and maybe it's a little faster. So now I have my pea-shaped flour ready to go, my flour and um, my uh, Crisco. Now I'm going to um, put in my favorite eggs, the egg lens best. Um, they also come in this really great container. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but they are so protected. It's double layer. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, in this bowl, I'm going to put four, and look how nicely they come out. Oh my gosh, they're just beautiful. Now, there are a lot of ways you could do this. I could have gone back and forth with my shells to make my, um, separate my yolk from my egg whites. But I'm just gonna go in here and grab them and let that drop off. Because it doesn't matter if a little tiny bit gets in anyway, but look how pretty and they come out so nicely. Okay, so now I have my four yolks. I'm gonna save my whites because I brush my pie with them uh, in a bit. And then I take a spoon and I break them up a little bit there and I just start moving my dough around with it. Get it all kind of incorporated. Then I am going to add six ounces of orange juice. I usually start with a spoon to get it incorporated and then I'll go in with my hand here in a minute and get it all um, together. And I kind of press the wet into the dry in the bowl so that I can get it all incorporated in there. And I'll tell you, orange juice, I think is a little secret that makes the crust so delicious. Um, so then now you can see I've got it all incorporated and then I put, usually put it in a, in a pasta bowl or something like this. And then I'll cover it with a piece of wax paper and I'll refrigerate it for, you know, an hour to overnight, whenever. And then, and then when I take it out, I cut it in fours and um, each one is a section and I can make two double crusted pies with this dough. So I like to peel my apples the old fashioned way, as you can see. Um, I have an apple peeler, but I just don't, it's fun, but I just like to do it this way. And for some reason it seems quicker to me to do it this way. But I feel like it's, uh, it's fun to do this the original way that the grandmas did it. My grandmother didn't do it, but um, my mother-in-law taught me how to do this when I first got married. And I still have the recipe cards that she gave me uh, where it shows how to, little arrows of how to roll out the dough and all that. But um, 
it looks like I am throwing these on the floor. I'm not, there's a trash can there, which is a great way to do this, just to stand over a trash can. So what I've done here is I quarter my apples with a big knife, and then I go back and use the knife, or maybe I won't really cut my hand, and uh, take out the sinners, and then I slice them like this. And the real trick is to keep them a uniform size. You don't want fat ones, skinny ones, things like that, because then it won't cook evenly. This is so great I'm doing this with you guys today. You know why? Because I thought, oh, so cute, I will pull out my mother-in-law's recipe card that she gave me in like 1982. And as I look at it, I see that it says only two egg yolks. And I put four in this crust. So I just want to tell you that it's only two. But I want to show you, this is what I was talking about. I don't know if you can see it, but the little arrows where she showed me how to um, roll out the dough. So cute. But um, thank you, Grandma Judy, for uh, giving me this recipe card a long time ago. And I guess my memory is not as good and I really should have pulled it out. Uh, I was thinking about my blunder with the eggs. And I once saw an interview with um, Julia Child where she, she dropped a chicken or something mid-show. And they didn't edit it out. And she brought it up and washed it off. And she said, because this is what happens in real life. So I hope you guys take it as a real life uh, moment that I should really pay attention to my own recipes. I have my apples all um, cut now, uniformly. And um, I ended up doing 12 because my apples were little. And then with my new um, fancy uh, canisters here, I can't, uh, this is too skinny. So, so I'm gonna start with a cup of sugar and um, I do that and, uh, I, and, and cinnamon and then I taste it and see because these apples seem to be very tart, so I may have to add a little more sugar to get them just the right sort of mix of tart and sweet. I had to bring out this beauty and show you. I, I should have written the date on it, but um, and look at it. I mean, you can tell how many pies I've made, all the cinnamon and uh, doughy, wet juice and stuff that's stuck all over this. This should go in like the Smithsonian, this thing. So I usually bring out, you know, I start with kind of about that much. It's probably a teaspoon. And, um, and when I stir it all up, and there, to me, is only one way to really um, mix this, and that's with your hands. So um, I get it all in, and this is why the cinnamon jar looks the way it does, because I'm sure sometimes I thought, I need to add more cinnamon, and I go at it with these hands, but uh, you wanna get them all nice and coated. And then I add about a tablespoon of uh, flour in here, and I mix that in, incorporate it all, and then I usually do this, I better taste it and see how it is, mm. I think it's actually perfect, I don't think I need any more, I incorporate it, and then I let it sit while, while I roll out the dough, and the reason is because sometimes when I don't, my pie is like water, it's, the, it's so juicy inside. Um, when it's finished uh, baking. So I think it's better to do it like this and then you lose some of the moisture um, as it waits. So, um, like I said, I, I cut my dough in four. So for some reason, a pasta dish seems to work so perfectly for this, so I've always used that. Um, so we have it like that. Then I'm going to flour my surface, whatever that is. I used to have a, a plastic mat before, but um, this, this seems to work well now that I have a little marble here. And like my mother-in-law said, you uh, try to handle it as little as possible. But, um, so you kind of push it out, and uh, I usually sprinkle a little flour on top too, so my uh, rolling pin doesn't stick to it, and I go from the center out. Okay, so I'm gonna show you another little secret. It's my pastry cutter, I think it's called, but. Um, it helps to get your um, dough on your rolling pin. So, um, and the flour and all that doesn't matter. But we're gonna roll it up. Because some will get stuck on the counter. And so I just kinda use that. So um, you can see now I've got this all rolled up on my pin. And I'm gonna lift it up and put it on my pie plate. Mm -hmm. Roll it in here. So you can see that uh, I got a lot of liquid drained off these apples, so I think that's gonna really help us to not have a liquid pie. 
but I still scoop up a lot of the, yeah, I really coat them, but um, leave that little bit of the liquid behind. Wait, but I'll tell you something, you bake the pie, like if I'm gonna have this for dinner, I bake it in the morning and I let it sit on top of my stove, cooling uh, and setting for the day. I take two slices of butter and I break them up and I put them on top of the apples. I'm going to get ready to make my top crust and um, it's the same thing, exactly the same. I just um, get it kind of coated in flour. That's kind of important and push it out. Because if you don't coat it in flour, your rolling pin gets super stuck. But you don't want to mess with it too much because your uh, vegetable shortening is in there and it creates uh, pockets because when it melts, um, it puts air in your pocket. Roll and go. And if it's sticking, I can add some more flour. And just know that no matter what happens, you can fix it. That's the best thing about that. All right, so I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna lay it on top and I unroll my pen. And see how it's kind of a little messy and crazy? But I can move it around. So now I'm going to do the edges. So it's overlaying probably about an inch and I turn it and I pinch it and I push with my thumbs in to get this effect. But you don't want it to be too thick. Um, it's almost better as a one layer, uh, but you have to, you need to mush it together. I just wanted to show you that um, because I'm really trying to make a pie that with problems for you. So um, this one, I had to put a little patch in here. You see it? but it won't matter. It just doesn't, none of this matters. And then when I go to, um, I'm going to brush it with my egg whites. I'll brush the whole pie with the egg whites. And then too, when it's a little wet from the egg whites, I can kind of blend the pie crust together a little bit. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do next. And then the pie's gonna come in the oven. But you know what else you can do is you can take it just like this and um, you can freeze it. You can wrap it all up in saran wrap and foil and freeze it for a month at least and bring it out, it'll be rock solid frozen, um, and then you put your egg whites on and put it in the oven. And it ends up taking maybe two hours to bake it, but um, it comes out just as, just as great.